Hey there friends, Dave Politis. This is the finale season five review for Skinwalker Ranch. And uh, I'm here with the executive producer of the show, Huck. And she just got her summer cut, so she is really cut down, looking lean and mean, and she's a lot cooler. She's way happier right now. She's had a rough couple weeks because it's been so hot, but uh, that has changed. She's much happier, and uh, hopefully she'll give me a, a better review of my program. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Season finale, Skinwalker Ranch. Yes, we made it. Made it through the whole year. Thanks for being here. Thanks for putting up with us. Let's get right into it. So I've told you before, I'll explain it again. Our work on missing people was recognized by the Bigelow team and they invited me to meet with the head of their investigative unit, Colm Kelleher. Kelleher said they saw relationships between my research and what they were doing at the ranch and we're gonna get more into that on this show in just a second. So they started off this show, the finale, a two hour finale, by drilling at the Mesa, talked about a broken piece of pipe. They needed to grab something like a fishing tool to extract the broken pieces and they were gonna go do that. And then they talked about uh, long distance LIDAR detection on top of a truck using a Leica lens and uh, they were trying to find more information about the pine cone looking thing or the apex cone in the triangle and so they were going to use several LIDAR devices in conjunction with each other and uh, then they were going to shoot a rocket off in the east field they were going to use mobile LIDAR driven by a car while a helicopter with night vision was going to be flying in the air following the truck as it went down from the east field. And then there was going to be a GPS tracking LIDAR. And then as it reached the other part of the ranch, a second rocket launch would go off. And then a second LIDAR unit was going to fly a pattern, a zigzag pattern back and forth through which the truck with the LIDAR had gone through. So they started off with the helicopter lifting off. Eric's brother was in command. I'm not Eric's brother. Uh, the owner of the ranch, Brandon's brother, was flying, Cameron. Eric was in the command center. They were going to have the drill site going all night. And then they had a handheld drone in the car LIDAR going off. They launched the rocket in the east field, a good launch. Helicopter flying above the truck as it drove along the road, east to west. Helicopter stayed at 1,000 feet. The drone LIDAR passed the triangle at the halfway point. They launched another rocket. Hilo and the LIDAR completed their first run. Nothing happened. So everybody turned around, getting ready to go back the other direction. Second rocket launch had already gone off. And then uh, something very unusual happened. Cameron, the pilot of the helicopter, Brandon's brother, his job was to fly above the, the Suburban with the LIDAR unit. And he said he was right above it. Well, as the guys are quite a distance from it, they can see that the helicopter is quite a distance from the truck as it's driving along. He wasn't right over it. Cameron said, no, no, I am. I, I could see that I am. But he wasn't. And they told him to hurry up and catch up. And Travis called that an optical illusion or an optical distortion that didn't make any sense. It took about a minute for Cameron to get up over the truck again. No issues. LiDAR truck reached the end of their return. 
He though got into position for another run going backwards. This time the helicopter went to 2,000 feet. A third rocket launch. And Cameron said in the helicopter he never saw the rocket launch. And everyone agreed that would be impossible that he didn't see that. And then the LiDAR drone picked up something over the spire. And could, could this have been what obstructed Cameron's view? That's what they asked. And then the LiDAR found another anomaly, very similar to the cone. Cameron was sent up to 5,000 feet because his view was obstructed at 2,000. Rocket launched, and then Cameron reported something zipping past the helicopter. Now they did something that was, that was very odd. They used a balloon thruster. Uh, like a hot air balloon, when you sit in the basket, above the basket, they have uh, propane and they have a thruster that burns off the propane that causes the helium to go up into the balloon. Well, they just had the thruster there and they were shooting that up over the triangle. And they were blasting it 31 feet up. And then Cameron was looking for, at the, for the phenomena at 5,000 feet. The propane blast went off. And then Cameron reported, and we could hear it, as the propane blast is going off, there's, there's static on the radio where he's trying to communicate with the men on the ground. And Travis even said that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be causing any static. And then they saw an op opaque blog moving across the mesa. And the best I can describe it is that predator effect in our movie and it was kind of moving across the mesa off the ground slowly. Nobody knew what it was, but it was odd. And it was big. And then uh, the helicopter and Cameron confirmed that two small UAPs flew by near and around the helicopter when it was by the triangle. And that was happening during the propane burn. Then they had a, an epiphany Late at night, they were minutes from breaking through with the drill, finally, hallelujah. They broke through on the top of the mesa. Everyone wanted to get up there, so uh, Cameron landed the helicopter, put Eric and uh, another player on in the helicopter. They drove up to the top, and so Eric and Caleb were up there with the crew when the pipe broke through on the mesa. It's kind of weird. It was like water percolating out of the ground and then the pipe shut through. They kind of had a little celebration up there because they finally were able to do it. And the point they kind of made was, was that they were, they were able to break through at the top in amongst all of this stuff happening, which is true. So the next morning, Travis walks up to the top of the mesa where the drill head came out. And he said that uh, they want to bore that hole that they just did, a 675-foot hole. They need to make it bigger. And uh, they want to put different types of equipment in there next year. So they're going to enlarge it and encase it. Drillers said that the hole would be fine and there wouldn't be any problem during the winter. Three days later, in Brandon's office, they halted ops for the year, and that was really the end of the show at that point. Oops. That was Hawk. He's a good girl. So, <clears throat> you got to remember something, folks. We're watching last summer's work. This summer, they're doing more work. They're there right now working. So, we're taking it about a year at a time, backwards. So Pete Kelsey, one of their experts on LIDAR, said uh, he had a terrestrial laser scanning device and he took it to the northeast and he found structure all around the triangle and vertical lines straight up, the same data as the invisible cone that they saw. And this is the second time they found the same data, almost like lines going straight up into the sky in a cone shape. Travis said, what in the world are we seeing? And then Jay Stratton said, 
Dre Stratton was part of the government crew that was there under Bigelow. He says, are we part of an experiment ourselves? That's what I said about a year ago. Jay must be watching my show. And then Kelsey to the northeast near the east field, data that shouldn't be there. 2,000 foot high anomaly, something was in the east field near where they saw the spire earlier. Eric, uh, real-time GPS tracking LiDAR drone was in and out of the pattern. In 2022, the Hilo captured a UAP flying <coughs> in and out of the Mesa. The same drone somehow momentarily disappears though. So this drone that is, they're kind of freelancing it, driving it up and down the, the route that the truck took with the light, LiDAR, the Suburban. And when they put that on the screen, there were gaps in the GPS data. And then what they did is they took past episodes where they used the same drone and other drones in that same area. And in that same area, they had a gap with no data transfer. Nobody could explain that. They overlaid these interruptions. Pete Kelsey said in the East Field, they had side scanner data points. They were using side scanner and they had data points underground from the LIDAR. And he explained that LIDAR is impossible to go underground. But what was really odd is that the data that they had underground equaled point for point for the data that they had above ground. It's like you could invert it and you could have the same results. It totally threw the crew off how that was happening. Pete Kelsey said it's nuts. East Field and the Triangle, two separate anom anomalies, or do they move around? That was Travis's question. Brandon asked, is there a portal? And these are all these guys sitting around a big conference table. Travis said, this is more advanced than our own physics. He says there's instantaneous shifts in time. And he said they recorded this in 2022 when they put a weather balloon up with a device and they took it up and that weather balloon was above the triangle and they recorded a quarter second off in time and space. Okay, everybody take a breath. How many people here have seen my special called Vanished on Amazon? Raise your hand. It's owned by the History Channel. It was a two hour special they hired me to do. And part of that is I got a team to come out to Mesa Verde National Park. And at Mesa Verde, they had a huge tribe of Native Americans just disappear. They left plates, food, everything there. It's like they were gone. Their genetics have never showed up anywhere. Nobody knows, including the park service where they all went. One of the going theories is that there was a portal. To have a portal, you have to have space and time issues. So we brought up a forensics team of experts to measure time. And we did it in front of one of these cliff dwellings with the blessings of the Park Service. What did we find? So it was a father-son team of scientists, geniuses. And they set it up. It took us like two hours to set up the experiment. And the first time that we did it, the two guys, the father and son, looked at each other and said, stop, stop recording, stop, stop. This, something's wrong. I said, what's wrong? He said, we're recording a quarter second disparity in time. And I said, well, that could mean that there's a portal here. He goes, yeah, but that's, that's unbelievably odd. We have to do it again. Well, they did it again and they got the same result. They were 100% po positive that there was a time anomaly at that cliff dwelling where these people disappeared. And why do I bring that up? This is one of the issues that parallels with what they're doing at the ranch. Because you see, to have a portal, you have to have time and space issues. 
multi-dimensions, portals, wormholes, whatever you want to call them. Well, when we were working with a physicist on Vanished, he explained how this works, and he was 100% sure in his mind that people were being taken by way of portals. This is a physicist that works for NASA. Now, they also went back and they talked to, about the UAP flashes that went by the helicopter super fast. Um, and then one of the most unusual things, but again, it goes back to what I've said all along. UFOs are always going to be intrinsically attached to water. Remember I told you, Bottle Hollow Reservoir, less than a mile away from the ranch. They film from the bottom of the helicopter a light coming out of the creek where they were walking down the middle of earlier this year. They watch this light come out of the creek and move and then disappear. That's in the same area they said that the dire wolf was found. Yeah, the same dire wolf they never supplied any DNA on. The one, one complaint I had about this two-hour segment is they had repeat, repeat, repeat of past segments. And anyone who watches the show doesn't need that. It seemed like a lot of filler to make the show two hours, my own personal feeling. Uh, Brandon Fugal, the owner, said, well, what are the next steps in the Mesa? And uh, Thomas Winterton said, uh, well, we have the borehole drilled. We got to drill it out to 18 inches. Then we got to frame it. And then uh, Travis said they're going to put gamma ray scanners inserted along with other devices to go back and forth and see what is in the Mesa. And then the flight paths are missing data, and somewhere, some of that data is underground. And then Jay Stratton, the guy who works for the government under Bigelow, said he thinks the ranch is trying to communicate with these people. I agree. I've stated all along that the 1.6 gigahertz impulse message, impulse data, that they're getting needs to be looked at by communication experts. I'm not an expert in that area, but the pulse on that meter goes and Travis has even said that looks like communications. So this was a two hour show and I'm done right now giving you the highlights in 20 minutes. One normal one hour show, I'm done in 25 minutes. That shows you how minimal the new data was in this show. Let me tell you, I think these guys are doing groundbreaking work. I'm a huge fan. And I will be with them at Phenomicon in Vernal, Utah later this summer, Phenomicon. And, uh, I'll be doing a presentation there on missing people and on Bigfoot. So, and I'll be presenting on Friday and Saturday. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. It'll, it'll be a, a great show. This is the last review episode for this year. Hopefully the History Channel brings them back. Huck's asleep. I'm ready to go too. Polite us out.